All right. Everybody have that? Luke 16, verse 13. The scripture says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Praise God. I want to preach on free the slave. Free the slave. When speaking of slavery, most immediately think of those taken against the will from Africa or other countries in the early to mid-1800s. However, forced labor still continues today and is more prevalent than which occurred in the 1800s. The International Labor Organization estimates today 20.9 million men and women and children around the world are forced to work for little or no pay at the complete mercy of their employer. Some estimates make the count at closer to 30 million. The numbers of those forced to work in mental or physical slavery or owned or controlled by an employer are not even close to the numbers of those in bondage in different, less obvious ways. Those in this type of slavery outnumber the 30 million many times over. To make matters worse, those in common type of bondage do not even know they have lost their freedoms. Now, we just call it a different thing than they did in the, the mid-1800s. Uh, or it is, is viewed as a different way. Uh, anybody know of the, uh, ever heard of the, uh, you know, cash your checks here places? Uh, I'm not here to preach against finances, but uh, it, it's kind of a, a, a rigged little deal where you, you get addicted to that. And how you get addicted to that is whenever you go and, and they charge you 10% uh, of your paycheck to cash your paycheck or they give you an advancement on your next week's paycheck. And then you always have to keep coming back to them because you always still owe them. And it's an ongoing process. Oh, when you get, you, you get enslaved to that, if that makes sense. And uh, it, it becomes hard to get away from that, free from that. And in the same concept, there's many things that's, that's going around. I want to go somewhere with this this morning. I'm just trying to make an example of slavery. Amen. And I want to tell you what, uh, the devil has come into a lot of our lives and made us slaves to sin and slaves to ourself. Uh, uh, the Bible has much to say about that type of oppression. There are two choices in the world. One can serve himself or his own selfish desires, which are sinful. And sometimes the devil's destructive desires for him or he can serve God. Which do we want to serve this morning? Do we want to serve God or so serve those sinful desires of the flesh that we become enslaved to? Although sin is always an individual's choice, always. It's always our choice whether we'll partake of sin or no. Nobody is there making us do it. But here, here's the deal. It soon becomes addictive. Sin does. And then it often leads to more sin. Right? Once, a, a, you know, there's many that has testified, you know, I, I just tried this or tried that. I was just going to try it, but... Uh, one thing led to the other, and then here I am today. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sitting here a slave to this. I've heard many people say, I I'd love to be free from this. I would love to be free from this part in my life. This is not who I am. This is not who I want to be. But somewhere along the line, they have become a slave to that sin in their life. Lying and deceitfulness lead to more lies and alienation from others as one becomes mistrusted. 
Bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, and jealousy rob many of peace and good relationship, drinking, drugs, pornography, and most sins never fulfill one's lust, often lead to one committing more of the sin in hopes that their cravings will be satisfied, in hopes that, I, I, you know, you'll get that next high, you'll get that next feeling, and, and that addictive feeling, and we become slaves to that. In our life is consumed how many older gentlemen and older women folk today in our world that have become enslaved to things, enslaved to wrong things in their life. And they hate their life because they live their whole life enslaved to something. I want to tell you life is passing us so swiftly. Life is passing by so fast. I used to think when I was a kid, uh, you know, will I ever get old enough to drive? Will I ever graduate? Will I ever get out of this grade school? It seemed like forever, didn't it? Or you get married, you have children, Something you've always waited for, and then you turn around and you're 40. Where did it all go? Life goes by so quick, amen. And uh, my point is, is that uh, we need to make the best of life and don't live our life enslaved and trapped in sin. Praise God. God, uh, God sent His only Son that you and I could be free. Anybody want to be free this morning? Amen. I love the old song, Thank God I am free, free, free free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Amen. I thank God for the precious blood of Jesus this morning that came to my heart. Amen. He said in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open unto me, I will come in unto him and sup with him. Amen. I know that I need Jesus to sit down with me again today. I need Jesus to come into my heart because what Jesus has to say, it brings life to me. It'll bring life to you. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh, uh, oh what was the wee little man? Uh, was it, uh, Zacchaeus that climbed up in a sycamore tree. He was enslaved to sin. He was enslaved to just getting more and more and more. He was enslaved to, uh, to uh, stealing from people and stealing their taxes and uh, all these kind of things. But yet he met a man that came by and said, I'll free you from all that, Zacchaeus. Amen. Come down from that tree. Let me go eat with you at your house today. Amen. You know, many... <laughs> criticized Jesus and thought, why are you going to that man's house? He's a crook. He's a wicked one. But you see, Jesus came to set Zacchaeus free. Amen. You know, he's still setting people free today. He'll set you and I free. Is there something in our life this morning that we have become enslaved to and, and we want free? And, oh, if I could this, if I could that. And, amen. I, I, you know, I'm not trying to make it sound just so easy this morning. But on the other hand, amen, there comes a point in your life that you have to say, you know what, I'm tired tired of being a slave to this. I want to be free. There's more to my life to be had than to be a slave entrapped to this. Amen. I say find your way out this morning. Find your way out to being a slave to what I, you know I don't have a list of things here this morning other than you know what the Bible plainly says and we'll go to Galatians here in a little while to see what sin really is. Amen. But you know you know in your life what you have become enslaved to what you feel that you're a slave to. Now I want to be I want to really be sure to make us understand or try to shed some light on it anyway. I don't think that we should feel like we're enslaved to the gospel. Now, we started off reading Luke chapter 16, verse 13. Said no servant can serve two masters. You know, we're either a servant to God or we're a servant to the world. And I want to tell you what, being a service to Christ is no way, shape, form, or fashion being a slave to Christ. Amen. 
But I'm glad that whenever I can serve Jesus because I love him. Anybody in here this morning serving Jesus because you love him? Amen. You can't serve Jesus because your, your mama wants you to. You can't serve Jesus because your pastor wants you to. Amen. The only way that you can ever serve Jesus and not feel like you're a slave to Jesus is to love him. Amen. With all your heart, your soul, and with all of your might. Praise God. That's what I want to do this morning. Praise the Lord. I, I want to love the Lord more and more and more and more. Amen. I can love the Lord because I see his goodness. Because I see what he done for me. That he gave his life on Calvary. Amen. He said he's got something prepared for those that love him. You can't even comprehend it. Amen. He's got some great things laid up in store for us. But you know what? The old devil is out to rob us of every good thing that God has for you and let me tell you let me warn you this morning that he's going to see to it that young folks that your life gets started off on the wrong track before you're able to hardly even get on the track Praise God. Amen. He, he tries to disrupt your mind, distort your heart, distort your desires. Uh, you know, I wish it weren't like that, but I'm just telling you, we got to be for real this morning and realize that we live in a world of sin. We live in a world that, that uh, you know, there's corruption, there's sin. Amen. Where did it all come from? Came from one man that decided to disobey God. In the Garden of Eden, his name was Adam, and her name was Eve. And you know what? God put a curse on this earth that we're still living under. Amen. But I want to tell you, I got to refer you back to Jesus. God so loved this world, that world is you. Amen. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will, Whosoever will. Amen. I'm glad that we can make a choice this morning. Praise the Lord. If we'll believe on him. Amen. He will save us to the uttermost. We don't have to live the rest of our life being a slave, being entrapped. Oh, my. Amen. But thank God for Jesus this morning. Thank the Lord. Amen. Iniquity never does anything but rob and destroy what could be good in our life. Sin, grass. It robs one of joy and makes one a slave. That's what sin does. That's what sin does in every shape, form, or fashion. When one chooses to do his own thing and ignore the life that God has desired for him to have, we're not only going to reap the, the terrible consequences of sin and the things that we've done in our life, but we alienate ourselves from God. You ever notice that the, the more that you allow sin in your life, the less you feel God, the less you feel drawn away from God's presence? Amen. That is what sin does. That is what sin will always do. Uh, John chapter 8 and verse 34 said, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. In other words, a servant, a slave to sin. Romans 6 and verse 20 said, For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. You're free from the good things. That means you don't have them. Because we're enslaved and entrapped in sin. John 8, 36 said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Free indeed. Anybody want to be free this morning? Is there something on your mind and your heart that, that you're thinking right now? Ooh, I'd like to be free from this. I would like to be free from this feeling. I would like to be free in my heart. I would like to be able to sing like a bird. I would like to be able to be free in my spirit. Praise God. It is to be had for every one of us. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, what the Lord sent the preacher to do. He said he sent them to preach a, a good tidings. Amen. Amen. And a peace. Praise the Lord. There is peace in Jesus. Praise God. There is peace in Jesus do you want that peace that's a question you have to answer do I want the peace do I want the peace in my life amen 
Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 says, Steadfast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know, I think of, of Egypt. And I think of how the Israelites got so used to the bondage that they were in. You know, let me tell you this morning, you can get used to bondage. It can become the norm in your life. It can become all you know after so long. You know, after telling one and teaching one something for so long, it become part of them. They become what some say indoctrinated. That's all they can see. Anybody ever wondered how uh, the Is Islamic or Muslim people, how could they even think that there's 10 or 15 virgins or 40 ever, how many it is that they think that's waiting on them when they leave this life? We sit here this morning, we think, how could anybody even think such a thing? They think it's their duty to kill all Christians and everybody that don't believe like they do. And we sit here and we think, man, how can they believe such nonsense? Because they have been indoctrinated. They have been born into that. They have been taught that over and over and over and over and over. And finally they grow up and it becomes real to them. And that's all they can see. They become enslaved to that. Amen. It's important to know the truth this morning. Don't you think? Praise God. It's important to know the truth of God's word. It's important to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free. And not being entangled into bondage. Israel, they had been in bondage for so long. That whenever God was leading them out of that bondage. And they had some rough times. They, you know what they said? They said, would to God we had been back in Egypt. How many of us has ever said that? This way is just too hard. I'm just going to go back to my old ways. The devil ever put that thought in your mind? I'm sure he has. I'll just go back to where I used to be. You know what? I'm tired of trying to be right. I'm tired of trying to do right. You see, the devil is such a deceiver. He is such a deceiver. He is trying to get you to come back to that bondage that you were once uh, uh, enslaved to but oh my this morning amen we can be free from sin we can free that slave that's within us praise God through the name of Jesus hallelujah and also going on in Galatians chapter 5 I told you we was going to get to what you may wonder what is sin being, in, being a slave to sin well we need to know what sin is don't we You know, I need to put on Facebook, what is sin? No, I don't. No, I really don't. Don't you know I would get all kinds of comments on what people thought was sin? There is no telling. But I'm going to tell you what sin is, okay? I, I'm not sitting here proclaiming that, hey, I got the goods this morning. And I know it's not within myself, but I, I do got the goods. It's right here. And look, if you don't have it, you might want to turn over there in your Bible so you'll know what sin is. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. The works of the flesh. Here's some sins. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Now, I don't have time to sit here and define every word. I, I'll leave that up to you in your studies. 
But here's the list. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting choked up there. If you go on, the rest of Scripture tells you what the fruits of the Spirit is. It'll tell you how, as Brother Nathan was teaching this morning, what your character should be. But you know what? You may sit in here and wonder, well, what is sin? I wish you would just highlight that in your Bible, Galatians 5, 18 through 21. And you study what each one of those words are. And then compare it with your life. And I'm going to tell you what. I believe the Lord will show you what sin is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And I want to tell you, we can become a slave to this stuff. Amen. A slave to things. You know, you know it talks about murderers here. It, you, you read in history of the, you know, the, all the different kind of gangs. I don't have all their names, but those that actually made history. Uh, they, you've got the Re Texas Railroad Killer and all these kind of things. They just went killing from one person to the next. Don't even know these people. They just kill, they're just killing. You know what I'm talking about. They were enslaved to the sin that was in their heart to commit murder. I know we sit here and think, how could anyone be and become of that mentality to take someone's life? I want to tell you, the devil's for real this morning. Amen. He's for real. Amen. The snake is for real. Amen. Uh, you may think something is just harmless, and, but you know what? Amen. You may uh, uh, pet the snake long enough, and you know what? He'll bite you. He will. Praise God. Amen. Uh, you know what? I want to be sure that I'm not petting the snake in my life. Amen. I'm not living, amen, on the line and living on the edge all the time. Praise God. I want to live right where God said to live. Amen. That is within his word. Praise God. Nothing more, nothing less. Romans chapter 6 and verse 18 says, Being then made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. Whenever we're freed from that slave mentality to sin. Verse 22 says, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting. Uh, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 18, behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he shall show judgment unto the Gentiles. Praise God. My servant. Amen. I want to become a servant under righteousness. I want to become chosen under God. Praise the Lord. Which what we already are. Amen. If you're saved this morning, you have accepted the blood of Jesus in your life. And as Christ's ultimate payment for your sin. Amen. You're one of the chosen. Amen. You're one of the chosen. Amen. If you're not, you can be today before you leave. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's very simple. Very simple. Amen. To come before God and to ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Amen. Not only to ask Him, but to be really, truly sorry. Amen. Sorry for what you've done. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but every now and then I still have to uh, kneel down upon my knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry for something I've done, something I've said, whatever the case may be. Amen. Because I want to be right with a master. How about you? Praise the Lord. Amen. John chapter 15 and verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father and made known unto you. And then chapter 12 verse 26 says, If any man serve me, 
Let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. Amen. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Free the slave that's in your heart this morning. Free that slave to sin. Amen. And let yourself become a servant under righteousness. Amen. I love this scripture in John 12, 26. I'm going to read it again. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. Praise God. He can be sitting down right beside you this morning. He can be with you in your heart and in your mind. Praise the Lord. And if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Praise God. God will honor you whenever you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. The most dangerous and ever present threat to anyone, even a saved person, is the commission of sin. It always has a price tag. Sin does. Always. And no one ever dreamed that maybe one sin would bring them to such a place. We sing that song, sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. It'll cost you more than you want to pay. It always will. It always will. The wages often comes due at the time that the sin's commission is forgotten. But there's always going to be a payday for sin. Always. You see, we may think, you know, we get that lust that burns in our flesh. And we think we want to partake of something. And then the moment we do... Here comes all the guilt. Here comes all the shame. Here comes all the feeling. And you know what? You start paying for it right at the beginning, don't you? Amen. And you begin to think after the sin is finished, you think, oh, I wished I would have never done that. I wonder how many boys was talking about those are sitting in the jailhouse this morning. I wonder how many sitting there today that's saying to themselves, oh, I wish I would have never done what I've done. I was thinking about a young man used to used to work the oil change place down here years ago. I won't go into the details, but he committed murder and got the death penalty. As of three or four months ago, I think they was uh, he was getting close to his his uh, execution day. I don't know whatever come of it, but I was thinking about him. He was a pleasant young man. I remember he changed oil on my vehicle. Remember speaking with him. And I was just trying to imagine how he felt sitting there in that cell, knowing that his days was coming to an end, that he was going to have to pay for his sin. What a horrible feeling. I can just imagine. I, I, I can't I totally place myself in his shoes because I've never been there. But oh, I can imagine the, the penalty of sin that he is having to pay. I want to tell you what. I, I, can, I can also assure you that he's thinking, why did I ever do that? Why did I ever play with sin? Amen. You know where it started? It didn't just start with him going and picking up a gun and or doing ever how the murder was committed. <coughs> No, it started with a little seed somewhere. Sin always does start with a little seed. And the more we water it, the more it grows. And the more we let it stay established and uh, take root in our heart, the, the bigger it grows. Until finally one day, it consumes our life. And we have to pay its awful cost. Oh my, this morning, you can be free from that slave of sin. Would you stand with me this morning? Someone come to the piano. One man said the way to keep the heart quiet is to keep ourselves in the love of God and do nothing to offend him. Keep ourselves in the love of God. Uh, in other words, what he's saying by keeping your heart quiet 
keeping down those, those horrible feelings that you feel after sin. Is to keep yourselves in the love of God and do nothing to offend Him. Praise God. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask you for your touch here this morning, Lord. I pray if there's one, God, that feels enslaved, that feels entrapped in sin. I pray, Jesus, that there would be freedom upon the altar in Jesus' name. We love you and thank you for it. Praise God. These altars are open.